you know, there was the scoop of the 60s and 70s, but, you know, and a lot of people refer to them because, you know, of that time, simply because that's within their lifetime. There was a whole process in the 50s, and I think a lot more children were picked up, you know, between the mid-50s and into the mid-60s. My, personally, myself, I went in in 55 into uh, foster care, and uh, at that time they were just coming into uh, where foster care was, uh, you know, the, what they called relief at that time after the, the war was just coming into play. And uh, Aboriginal people, first of all, weren't, uh, weren't a part of uh, the social service system because they were hunters and gatherers, uh, you know, uh, prior to war. It wasn't until after they came back and uh, the situation, you know, with the, well, there's a number of situations, one with the land, uh, the one with the restrictions of reserves and land base and, and uh, the economic base that they needed to uh, to survive, and that was a, the time with uh, with my family, and uh, those returning from war, the soldiers were given a quarter section of land, so there was no more how would you say free land anymore, and uh, people like my father who uh, who uh, had a homestead they couldn't maintain it. And as a result, they went to living on road allowances, you know, along the side of the roads uh, where Crown land was mm -hmm. on reserves. And uh, they had to, to uh, try to make a living. And uh, most of them were uneducated so uh, and didn't have the money, you know, to be farmers. So they became trappers, uh, you know, hunters and gatherers again. And that's how... Uh, most of the people in my community at that time lived. They were all hunters and trappers, you know, and uh, that meant leaving home for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. We lived off wild meat and, uh, you know, and our community was, you know, was very tight. It wasn't till probably around the mid-50s or early 50s is when uh, alcohol started coming into the community. And the minute alcohol came into the community, then there was less care for the children. And when that started happening, that's when social services started making the move, you know, because people in the community would see that the children were not taken care of. In my case, my mother died when I was very young. And my father had eight children, and he was a trapper. So the oldest one, which was uh, my sister Maria, used to take care of us. Dad would bring uh, uh, ladies in to take care of us, you know, usually through friends, you know, because he couldn't afford to pay them. And they'd stay a while. But trying to take care of eight kids and three of them just barely, you know, two of them still in diapers and, and you know, the rest of us were barely out of diapers was, uh, was a tough call. And, I, you know, lack of food, lack of resources, you know, to the grocery stores and everything. We were maybe 20 miles to the nearest store. And Dad would be gone for, you know, a couple of months at a time on the trap line trying to uh, make a living. So a lot of children were picked up. A lot of uh, communities came apart and they moved into, um, into centers, you know, towns, because that was where uh, relief was. That was where social services uh, sent the checks out from. And uh, as a result of that, uh, alcohol started playing a big part in their life and uh, they started losing their children. And uh, so I'd say the scoop started in, in the 50s because a lot of us went into foster care. And in those group homes, or well it wasn't group homes till the early 60s, but in those foster homes we were taken in as workers. Uh, the people used us you know, like farmhands. I remember getting moved two or three times a year uh, based on the work. 
you know, the springtime we'd be picking rocks, picking roots, and then uh, then there was a planting season, you know, the gardens and everything else, and then uh, then there was a harvest. The winter time, uh, you know, you sometimes you'd run into good foster homes, but most of them were like labor camps. You know, it was fantastic. The government paid these people to take us in, and uh, they worked us. We worked hard. You know, uh, I remember one place I was in for uh, a year and a half before I even saw a town. All I did was clean pig pens. So it wasn't a good time for foster kids because there wasn't policy in place, you know, that uh, they were still working on it. There was really, uh, they relied on, uh, you know, on, uh, on the uh, people who took these foster kids of treating them fairly. And in a lot of cases, that didn't happen. There was a lot of abuse, you know, not only to myself, but, you know, to, uh, to other kids that I saw. You know, the beatings and, and the things that took place. And a lot of it, uh, you know, we came out of uh, the bush and uh, we couldn't speak English. Uh, personally, myself, uh, I spoke uh, Cree, uh, Mechif, and French, English. Well, you seldom heard it. So when you moved into these places, they were all uh, usually European people. Native people uh, were never looked at as, as being foster parents in those days. So you went into these places and uh, as much as you, as anybody, even today, uh, you know, I see that in foster, as much as you care about being a foster parent, that child that comes in is not your child. That child knows it, and so do you. It's plain and simple. So there is going to be upheaval in the, in the first few years. You haven't had a chance to, to uh, raise that child, to, uh, you know, to give them the, uh, the tools they need on behavior and all these other things. So what's expected of foster parents is, uh, you know, is expecting a lot. But it's also expecting a lot from the foster child, too, because they know who their parents are, and they come with a lot of mental health problems. And once they're in the foster care system, that system creates a lot of mental health problems also. So what may start out as a, as a child being good, it don't take long for a child to hate themselves to see themselves as different and to have low self-esteem and to, uh, to give up. You know, I work a lot in prisons now and I'd say 75% of the people inside of prisons are foster care. You know, it is huge. But even to this day, government doesn't want to look at that. They don't want to look at the mental health issues that they created or the mental health issues that were created by a system that they put in place that doesn't work. And what is the solution? The solution is working with those families. And we don't need to have uh, um, foster care per se as it is today. You know, what takes place of taking the child away, that only creates more problems. What we need to do is start looking at the prob the social problems that our people have, the drugs, the alcohol. Why does a family break down? And why does a you know does a father not stick around, you know, and, and leave it upon the woman, you know, the mother to be both father and mother? Those are social problems brought on by society. And the ones who pay the price are the children. And as a result of going through that system, they grow up angry, they grow up hateful. I did, and I spent a lot of time in institutions, and I spent a lot of time striking out at what I believed caused that.